Hi, I'm your host for today, Dr Liam Lenton from the School of Economics at La Trobe University. Sport is full of apparent anomalies. We'll raise a handful of them in this video series. But usually there's an economic reason why we observe what we observe. Each of these six videos will introduce an economic concept, which you may or may not know, and will also introduce a tool by which the concept will be applied, all in an effort to explain these anomalies. And what better way to commence the series than by way of the concept of incentives, in this case perverse, and strategies in economics, and also the policies used as the tools to optimise outcomes. Now, you would think a basic winning tactic in the round ball version of football would be to kick the ball between the posts. Your opponent's posts, that is. However, the 1994 Caribbean Cup involved a first round match between Barbados and Granada, in which Barbados needed to win the match by two clear goals to advance to the knockout stage. Even winning the match by merely one goal would see Granada advance instead. Simple enough so far. But the governing body of the tournament stipulated a very quirky rule, supposed to reward teams for winning close matches, but laden with potential per for perverse incentives, that drawn games would proceed to extra time, in which goals would count double. And by virtue of addition of sudden death, there could be only one. This supposedly simple rule created a horribly weird match. With less than 10 minutes remaining in regulation time, Barbados led 2-0, exactly the lead they required, and began to play very defensively, as one might expect. However, in the 83rd minute, Granada pulled one back, making the score 2-1, enough to send them through instead. Barbados once again proceeded to attack, but was thwarted at every turn. With only three minutes left, the Barbados players contemplated their options. To advance, they still needed to score an extra goal, allowing them to win by two, but they had another, less obvious option afforded to them by virtue of the idiosyncratic rule mentioned earlier, which, you may have guessed by now, they chose instead. They scored a deliberate own goal, levelling the game at 2-2, intended to send the game into extra time, where they would have an additional 30 minutes to score, and because of that rule, yet again, one goal, counting as two, would be enough to kill the contest immediately in their favour. This is not even yet the most peculiar phase of the match. Now, Granada, initial shock abating, realised that what they needed to do next was score a goal at either end to, on one hand, win the game, or on the other hand, lose by one, but at least avoid extra time, and both of these means would be equally sufficient to, to achieve the ends and so the Granada players turned around from the restart and headed for their own goal. From here, the comedy really intensified as the Barbadians had anticipated this move and half their players rushed forward to defend the Granada goal while the other half stayed back to defend their own. Successfully, I might add, until the end of injury time. Ultimately, Barbadian ingenuity was rewarded as one of their strikers scored the winning goal four minutes into extra time, sending Barbados through to the following phase. It's worth noting that no penalties were handed down by FIFA to the Barbados Federation on the grounds that they were genuinely trying to achieve the best outcome in the overall context of the tournament. As expected, the Grenadians were not amused. Manager James Clarkson was furious. Quote, I feel cheated. The person who came up with these rules must be a candidate for the madhouse, unquote. For those of you with an interest in the world game, your assignment is to go online and find out as much as you can about an infamous 1982 FIFA World Cup match between Austria and the then West Germany, which produced more than an hour of tacitly collusive goalless football, not to mention utterly boring, and see if you can understand the perverse incentives at play in that case. Needless to say, policies were altered thereafter to ensure that the final pair of first round matches in the same group would be played simultaneously to help circumvent such incidents in the future. Anyway, all this sounds the warning of the law of unintended consequences. Governments have to be mindful of these possible perverse incentives in formulating all sorts of policy, from taxation to health to education. 
Yes, this stuff is undeniably important to the bigger picture of governance and society.